Hey, good morning. Welcome to our online video stream. Um, my name is Devin Reichman. I'm the Associate Pastor for Faith Church here in Kitchener. And uh, just thank you for joining us. If you're part of our Faith Church, um, you know, it's kind of unfortunate we can't meet together. And I'm sure that you're missing um, some of your fellow Christians here at the church. Um, but we have this live video, and we have the posts, and we have the comments, so we can connect with each other um, online. And so please feel free to do that throughout this video. Um, maybe if you're not part of our church, but you stumbled across this video, um, and, uh, and you're not part of any church at all, you're so welcome here. So glad that you could stream us, and I hope that this will be an encouragement to you um, throughout it. During this live video, uh, we'll have a chat thread, so feel free to go on there and offer your prayer, prayer requests, um, lines of praise. Uh, maybe you want to bless somebody in our church, just type that out. Maybe during the worship, you want to praise God. You can type out a line of prayer, uh, of praise to God. Just, God, I bless you. Hallelujah. You are good. You are unchanging. Feel free to uh, worship in that way as well throughout the music. Also, if you have any general in uh, inquiries, questions, or comments on the sermon, or questions, please post those in the chat thread, and we'll do our best to get back to you with those things. Just one quick announcement, though. With church really changing lately with, um, with this virus, we are going to be start embracing this online video prayer Bible study uh, format next week. And so if that interests you, if you want to meet with some of our people online, we have a number of different formats we're going to be embracing, whether you're in a senior's uh, Bible study or a women's or a young adult's or a youth or whatever the case may be. If you still want to meet with people, please um, send me an email. My email is in the description of this page, or it should be posted here in this video, and we'll, uh, we'll get in contact with you. And so if you have a family, gather your family together. Uh, if you have a dog, bring your dog near, pet him, get comfy, grab your coffee, get comfy, and just get ready to connect with God. Um, this is what this video is about. This is not... Um, true church, but it is an experience which will help us to connect with God and continue to encourage us during this unsettling time. So would you just join with me and ask God to, to bless us during this live video in prayer. Father in heaven, we come to you in faith through Jesus Christ. And Lord, even though we're not meeting together as your people the way you designed us to, we know that you're powerful enough to meet us, even in our homes separately. You're good enough to bless the technology, God, that we have so we can connect with your word. We can even connect with each other through online dialogue and discussion. And Father, we can most of all connect with you, even sitting in our home. So would you do that with each person, God, just watching this video live. Bless them, draw near to them. In Jesus' name we pray together. Amen. Well, good morning, Faith family. Good morning, guests. We're glad that you're here with us. It's weird not to see all of your faces out there, but uh, we're going to worship God together. So I just uh, encourage you to join us. The words hopefully will be on the screen, and, uh, and you can sing along with us.
great that we have a hope and a joy and peace in Christ Jesus. In the beautiful name of Jesus Christ who saved us, it's because of him that we are free. We're going to sing what a beautiful name.
in light of everything that's going on right now in the world, the question often comes to mind, where do we look, where do we turn? We've got social media giving us stories, we've got news giving us other stories, our family and friends have their own thoughts on it, and it's easy to get overwhelmed. It's here that we should be turning to the scriptures. There's so much encouragement there. I'm going to read from Psalm 121 uh, from the Passion Translation, because I feel like it just embodies some of the emotions that, that some of us are dealing with right now. I look up to the mountains and the hills, longing for God's help. But then I realize that our true help and protection comes only from the Lord, our Creator who made heaven and earth. He will guide me and He will guard me, never letting me stumble or fall. God is my keeper. He will never forget or ignore me. He will never slumber nor sleep. He is the guardian God for all His people, Israel. Jehovah Himself will watch over you. He is always by your side to shelter you safely into His presence. He's protecting you from all danger, both day and night. He will keep you from every form of evil and calamity as He continually watches over you. You will be guarded by God Himself. You will be safe when you leave your home and safely you will return. He will protect you now and He'll protect you forevermore. Amen. We're going to sing that, uh, that song in the form of a song. I lift my eyes up. from a God who is faithful, a God who will never abandon us, he will never forsake us. Thou changest not thy compassions, 
spend some time praying as a, as a church and just those who are viewing this video, would you just join us in prayer together? Um, but before we do, if you're part of our church, uh, we'd ask you to continue to give if you can. Um, there's a number of ways that you can give toward this ministry. Um, you can mail a check to our church. Our address is on the Facebook page or our website. You can drop off a check here, but you can also do e-transfer. I mean, I know a lot of us don't really want to go out and about. Um, me especially, I just don't want to go out and about and want to stay safe and so um, if you want to do e-transfers contact our office administrator her email is in the description of facebook page you can also go to our website and find her email there and we can connect you with that uh, but let's just spend a few minutes in prayer together if you're with your family i encourage you just to hold hands um, uh, or just bow kneel um, but just humble yourself before god as, as we pray there's a lot of needs that we have a lot of things that we need to be praying for, for each other, um, against this virus, for safety, for protection, for God's mercy, his compassion on us. So as a body of believers, just scattered all around in our homes, let's just pray together and, uh, and beseech the Lord for these things. Father, we pray together. Even though, Lord, we're in our homes right now, all separated, we know that, Lord, you're with us. And we are still connected, Lord, spiritually. We're still one in Christ, faith, church, God. We're still one because of the Holy Spirit that keeps us together. We thank you for that. But Lord, we just pray for our people this morning and for the rest of this time. During this unsettling time, God, with this virus, that our people would be resting. God, help us to rest in the power and the sovereignty of you during this time. Lord, we pray for protection. For all of our people in our church, Lord, everybody connected to Faith Church, Lord, and those who are viewing, Lord, who aren't in, in, in our church or even connected to church, Lord, just protect them. Put your hand upon them and be gracious and uh, shield us against this. Father, we pray for wisdom, wisdom for our Prime Minister Trudeau. Lord, we thank you for the decisions that he's making, how you are helping him and guiding him. Lord, continue to do that. Put your hand upon him and may he govern our country, God, for our good. Grant him wisdom during this time. Lord, I pray that all of our country at this time would start taking precautions more seriously, that we would all, Lord, begin to um, just be safe, obey our government, Lord, respect them and reverence God, knowing that you have placed them over us for our good and for our protection. Lord, be gracious to Canada. We pray, Lord, that it would not spread anymore, but that, Lord, you would indeed uh, lower the cases, and even squash this virus out. Jesus, you're in charge of all things. You're sitting on the throne, and you could take it out within a blink of an eye. We ask you to be gracious and do that, Lord. Father, we want to thank you, though, for all of the good things that you've given us, Lord, still. We have our family. We're sitting in our homes. We can still connect with each other through online. We have this technology, God. We have the Word of God in our homes. We have salvation. We have Christ, God. We have many reasons to be thankful. We have enough reasons to worship and praise you and not be downtrodden or downcast. So help us, God, to think of those good things just as you've instructed us. To think lovely things and true things and spiritual things. And Father, we thank you most of all for Jesus Christ. Lord, help us not to be whipped into a panic, but to trust in Jesus, knowing that he's with us, that he will not abandon us, that he's our shepherd, and he will shepherd us as his people. Thank you for him, that he's committed himself to us, even during this time. Lord, we thank you that you will show how faithful you are to us. You will prove your faithfulness to your people. And Lord, we pray that during this time, as this virus God is causing panic and scare worldwide, that Lord, through all of that, we know that you will work something 
good out of it because that's the kind of God you are. So God, we pray as faith church, as Christians, as viewers right now, that Lord, through this virus, many would come to Christ. Many would start thinking about, about life and death and afterlife and you, God, and that they would be drawn to you, Jesus Christ. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, faith family. My name is Gary. Pastor Devin asked me to speak about a little situation I had about 10 days ago. I was watching uh, the news all about, you know, COVID. And it was COVID this, COVID that. And I was getting overwhelmed. And I just, all of a sudden, was so heavy in my heart. I looked to my left and there was the good book sitting right there. And he like, he spoke to me and said, it is well with my soul. Cast your burdens on him. And all those overwhelming thoughts just disappeared. And I opened the book and just read it. And I had no worries. And I just want to pass that on to you. That when you feel in despair or discouraged, just open the book. Sometimes it can be hard. I know I do that a lot. And I'm learning more and more to go to the good book. And you will feel comfort with the Lord. I know it. God bless. Keep safe. Thank you. Welcome, Faith Church, and, and welcome to all our guests today. I'm Rich Kopanke. I'm the pastor here at Faith Church in Kitchener. And I think we'd all agree that these past couple of weeks have been rather unsettling, fearful, a bit scary for you, for your family. As one crisis counselor put it, people are very anxious about what's happening. People are feeling worried and scared. And it makes sense. Over 300,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19, 13,000 deaths, no end in sight. So how are we supposed to respond to something like this? None of us have been here before. Where do we find help and, and, and how do we give hope? Maybe hope to your, your, your family, to your children, to a neighbor, to a friend who's so worried. What can we say? This morning, as we look around us at all the fear and panic, I'd also encourage us to look backward. Back to about mm, 3,000 years ago. That's when an unknown musician in a Jewish worship band wrote a song. A song in which there's one word that makes all the difference during a crazy time like this. We read this song in Psalm 46. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. I don't even know the tune. But we're going to take a couple of minutes to break down this psalm. In it, the author is going to paint pictures of the worst case scenarios he can think of. And then he's going to show us how he copes when his life comes crashing in. And as he does, we're going to find that his solution, his confidence during times of trouble, during upheaval, his confidence is found and boils down to one word. One key idea that might indeed help us as we try to cope with what's happening today in our society. Let's search for that idea. Let's work our way through the psalm. Psalm 46 starts with a bold statement of confidence. The author writes, God is our refuge and strength. And the Hebrew sentence structure here places huge emphasis on the word God. It's as if the author wants to make sure that we are totally certain that nobody, nothing else, but God is the answer. God is our refuge and strength. He's our shelter. God is our source of power. He's the one who protects us. He's the one who fights for us. God is our refuge and strength of ever-present help in times of trouble. You know, that word ever-present, it's quite fitting, especially if you've been cooped up with the kids all week and you're going stir-crazy. The Hebrew word here literally means cramped quarters. The author uses this word to try to, to signify, to, to tell us how how close God is to us during troubling times. 
And just in case you're wondering what troubling times are, he helps us. He paints some pictures. He, he gives us descriptions. First, he starts with a description from nature, a terrifying display of what nature can do. He says, therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Try to put together an earthquake, oh, a tsunami, a landslide, throw in a, a hurricane for good luck. And you get this idea of sheer chaos in nature, the worst of the worst. And that picture is meant to make us think of the most catastrophic event in our own lives. Can you point to a time like that? Have you been through catastrophic events? Maybe when your marriage was crumbling? Maybe your business was going under? Maybe the doctor looked at your test results with a frown? Possibly your best friend left you? You fill in the blank. Each and every one of us will or, or, or have already gone through catastrophic events, difficult moments of terror and pain and, and fear. Maybe for you that moment is right now as COVID-19 fills you with worry and depression. And then the author switches pictures. He takes this terrifying picture of nature out of control and he starts talking about war. He speaks about a city under siege and where God is during that disaster. We read beginning in verse 4, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. He's talking here about Jerusalem, the holy city for the Jews. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob. Jacob was one of the forefathers of the Israelite nation. The God of Jacob is our fortress. You know, a city under siege is one of the worst case scenarios that you could ever imagine in the ancient world. Try to picture it. You've got thousands of people crowded into this little city behind the walls. There's disease. There's food and water shortages. I doubt if they even had toilet paper. And then there's the enemy outside the gates, ready to hack you apart if you make a run for it. But again, our author reminds us of something we often forget during those terrifying moments. He's telling us God still is in the picture. God has not forgotten us. Did he catch that? How he says God is within her, she will not fall. How, how he says God will help her at break of day. He affirms the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Friends, God hasn't forgotten us. Even though during those worst moments of your life, he was with you, whether you realized it or not. Another psalmist, David, writes in Psalm 23, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. If you're a child of God, if you put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, then God is your refuge and he's your strength. It doesn't mean life is always going to be easy. God has never promised his kids that they won't go through the valleys. But he does promise us that we'll never be alone. Your Heavenly Father is an ever-present help in trouble. And then, just in case you're wondering, can God really pull all this off? I mean, is God really powerful enough to make a difference, even at a time like this? The author points to historical proof in the Israeli nation that he's capable of keeping his promises. He says, come and see what the Lord has done. Take a look at the desolations he has brought on the earth. See how God makes the wars cease to the ends of the earth. Look at how he breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Can you see it? We've got a picture here of a field littered with the wreckage of battle. You've got the bows that are broken. You've, you've got spears that are just in pieces. You've got chariots that are smoldering from fire. What we have here 
is actually a historical picture of the many times in the history of Israel when God came through for them. I mean, Israel was a tiny nation, but they were God's people. And as a result, God fought for them. And oftentimes, they surmounted insurmountable odds. Now, I realize for you, it's probably not going to be a battlefield where God is going to show his power and care for you. Maybe it's going to be on a hospital bed when God brings healing, even though the doctors weren't sure you were even going to make it. Maybe it's going to be in your marriage where God knits you and your spouse together again in a love, a passionate love for each other, even though you were sure you were heading for divorce court. Maybe it was a job when it seemed like nobody was hiring. Possibly it was, it was getting a visa after the Canadian government had turned you down multiple times. Maybe it was a friend who just happened to come over to your house at your deepest, darkest moment and spoke words of hope to you. God is still in the picture. God has not forgotten us. And that's why our author concludes this psalm by quoting God. He quotes God as he says, Be still and know that I'm God. Quiet down your heart. Look, look around you. Realize who I am and how much I care for you. I will be exalted among the nations. In other words, you're going to finally see my power. You're going to finally see my love, my, my care for you. I will be exalted in the earth. And then the psalmist concludes, The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob. He's our fortress. Be still and know. Are you doing that right now? In the middle of this crazy, chaotic, confusing time? Like Gary talked to us about. Are you turning off maybe the TV for a moment? All those COVID announcements and updates and, and instead maybe turning to the Bible? That's God's personal letter to you. It's filled with love and encouragement and, and direction. Are you trusting him for, for even more than just your physical health? Are you, are you trusting him with your soul and your eternity? I mean, that's why Jesus came to this earth. That's why he died on that cross. For you and for me to help us deal not just with our problems right now, but also with our need for a relationship with God. For our desire to be ready for what comes after this life. If that's something you're looking into, if that's something you're wondering about, I encourage you to contact me. Our contact information is on our website, faithchurch.ca. Let's talk further about it. You know, I started this morning by telling you that the solution and confidence we can have in the face of the upheavals of life, it all boils down to one word. Did you find that word in Psalm 46? It's right there in the beginning. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. You know, that word therefore is huge. It's really the only reason why we don't have to fear. Therefore, because of who God is. Therefore, because of his love for us. Therefore, because of his power. Therefore, we can have hope and confidence even in the most difficult times. My prayer for you is that you will experience God. And that in experiencing God, you will find the hope and confidence that you're looking for right now. Can I pray for you about that? Let's talk to our Father. Father, here we are. And it is a crazy time. And Lord, there's not a whole lot of answers. We don't know where things are going but we can know you. We can know you personally as our Savior, our Lord, our Father. We can take the promises that you've given us in your word and we can claim them because they're for us today. We can look to you when things are crazy. We can offer you as hope to others. And I pray that for each one that's listening right now. I invite you to do something special in each of their lives. I invite you, Lord, to bring calm and peace into their hearts as they learn to lean heavily upon you during this difficult time. 
And most of all, Lord, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your faithfulness. You don't change, and we can trust you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for joining us today here at Faith Church. I encourage you to be back next week. I encourage you, if you're interested in an online Bible study, to contact us. If you've missed part of the recording today or would want to share it with others, it will be on our website, faithchurch.ca. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face shine to you. And may he give you peace. Thank you for being here today.